Hello, I'm Marilyn Chase, your state senator from the 32nd Legislative District. Today I'd like to talk to you about an issue that is true, truly bipartisan, pets. Whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, a cat person or a dog person, we all love our pets and go to great lengths to care for them. Sometimes taking care of our pets is expensive and like many things in life, not all of us can afford it. That's why I sponsored Senate Bill 5202, which offers assistance to families who can't afford to spay or neuter their pets. I'm happy to report that the bill received bipartisan support in the Senate last week and will now head to the House for further consideration. The purpose of this bill is to provide funding to assist low-income owners of cats and dogs to af obtain affordable spay and neuter surgeries and to provide for spay and neuter surgeries on feral and free-roaming cats. The bill would not make spay and neuter surgery mandatory. Low-income residents are the least likely to be able to afford the cost of spaying and neutering of their pets or even paying for routine or emergency care for their animals. Studies have shown that cost is a major reason why people do not get their pet pets spayed or neutered. Studies have also shown that pets in low-income households are less likely to be sterilized, thereby making up a significant part of the overpopulation crisis. This bill is all about pet owners helping out less fortunate pet owners, which I think is the aspect of the bill I like best. But beyond just ha helping out the less fortunate, this bill also makes great strides in helping to control the pet population. Pet homelessness is the single leading cause of death for healthy cats and animals in the United States. About five million animals are killed in our country's shelters every year. In our own state, tens of thousands of cats and dogs are euthanized in shelters each year. Reducing the number of animals killed in shelters each year is not just a matter of being humane. It costs a lot of money to handle homeless animals in shelters and through animal control agencies and rescue organizations. Washington state taxpayers spend millions of dollars each year to handle these animals. The minimal donation on behalf of pet owners, of which I am one, will help alleviate the burden on these shelters which are already operating with razor thin budgets. The program is good for small businesses. Most veterinary clinics are small businesses. If they wish to perform spay and neuter surgery, they would be eligible to apply and they would be reimbursed the fair and reasonable cost of performing the surgery. The overpopulation of pets affects us all. Unwanted and feral animals such as wild cats can spread disease and bite and attack children and adults. Spayed and neutered pets are also healthier and live longer than animals which have not been spayed or neutered. Many types of diseases such as cancer and heart problems can be avoided when a pet has been fixed. This is a public health issue, but also one that will save money. Similar programs have been established in at least eight other states, including Connecticut, Delaware, Illinois, Maine, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, and, Der and Vermont. The New, ha New Hampshire program began in 1994, and in, it, in its first few years, a 34% decrease in animal shelter admissions and a 75% decrease in euthanasia were reported. New Hampshire has also reported a savings from animal impoundment costs due to the program. As these states have shown, there is a better way to address the pet overpopulation crisis. This good little bill is about pet owners helping pet owners. I hope it will find its way through the House of Representatives and become law. That's all for this week, and as always, please don't hesitate to con contact my office with any questions, comments, or concerns. My information is at the bottom of your screen. Thanks for watching.